The world deserves lots of stores. It's all very healthy for the industry to see lots of competition on lots of different fronts. That was Tim Sweeney, the CEO of Epic Games, talking about the controversial new game launcher, the Epic Games Store. Calling the Epic Games Store controversial might be a bit of an understatement. There's an extreme negative reaction from the gaming community around anything that has to do with the Epic Games Store. There are jabs being thrown left and right, some going as far as to boycott the launcher altogether. But why would something as small as a game launcher invoke such a visceral reaction? Well, it all comes down to exclusive releases. When the Epic Games Store was first announced, there was actually some positive reactions from the community. When I first heard Epic Games was coming out with an online store, I thought finally, here's a company who has the user base but more importantly has the financial backing to compete with Steam. And I think we can all agree that Steam needs competition. Valve has had a monopoly on the PC game store slash launcher market for quite some time. Whenever your new game comes out, the first thing my friends and I ask are, is it on Steam? We've grown accustomed to having all of our games available in one place. Admittedly, I get mildly annoyed when I have to download other launchers like Origin or Battle.net to play the few games that I like such as Apex Legends or Overwatch. But truly, the only reason I use Steam is because most, if not every game is available on it. It's certainly not for its ease of use or modern UI. Steam itself has its own flaws, but Valve has never needed to put in a genuine effort to fix them because they have no competition. So here comes Epic Games. With Fortnite money in hand, they are ready to challenge Steam as the number one online gaming store and launcher. Their biggest selling point is their revenue sharing model, where game developers get an 88% cut of the games purchased on Epic Games Store. We can compare that with the 70% split you get on Steam. As a developer, you can see how sweet the deal sounds, and as a consumer, I think it's really cool. In an ideal world, the developers of the game would get 100% of the profit from the games they make. But since game launchers are kind of important, I'd at least want them to get as much profit as they can. Sounds great, right? Yeah. Well, there's one big issue. In order to disrupt the market, Epic Games is challenging the status quo with the strategy of exclusivity. Starting with a long-awaited title, it would be announced that Metro Exodus would be a timed exclusive offered on the Epic Games Store, meaning it would be unavailable on Steam until February of 2020. Since then, many more games have followed suit. Highly anticipated titles like The Outer Worlds, The Division 2, and Borderlands 3 have all agreed to an exclusivity deal with the Epic Games launcher. Some of these games were even previously announced that they would be available on Steam, but no longer. With money to blow and no signs of stopping, this caused an uproar in the gaming community. People didn't like the fact that if they wanted to play these highly anticipated titles, they were going to have to buy them through the Epic Games Store. And with each subsequent announcement of another game being an Epic Store exclusive, the outrage grew bigger and bigger. The outrage grew to the point where people review bombed previous games in the franchise and threatened to boycott the buying of these games until they came out on Steam. Now, this is sort of a foreign concept to me. If I want to play a game, I'm gonna get the game. The apple juice won't taste different if I buy it from Target as opposed to Walmart. But people are genuinely angry. The biggest issue they bring up is that the Epic Games Store isn't as feature complete as the Steam Store. It's pretty bare bones. At the moment, there's a list of features that the Epic Games Store doesn't have. Things like user reviews, cloud saves, and shopping carts. From the looks of the Epic Games roadmap, we won't be getting any of these features for at least 6 months. There was also a concern about the Epic Games launcher doing some suspect things with your Steam profile data, leading some to accuse Epic Games of stealing users' personal data. This has since been denied by Epic Games, stating that they do create a copy of your Steam profile to import your Steam friends, but none of that information is sent unless you explicitly give them permission. By then, the damage had been done. The community had already taken the idea of stolen user data and ran with it. This, coupled with the fact that Tencent, a Chinese tech company, has a big stake in Epic Games, only fuels the hate for Epic and their launcher. I can't help but feel this whole situation is a symptom of the state the gaming community is in right now where every exciting game announcement is marred by the anticipation of something negative from outside factors like publishers or platforms. It's no longer about the games themselves, it's about choosing a side, choosing an angle that will get the most likes or attention. It seems less important for a game to be fun and interesting and more important that it checks all the right boxes so people don't flame you. For all the heat Epic Games is taking, they seem unapologetic. For most games, the store makes more profit than the developer makes. It's critically important to fix that. Popular or not, it's a strategy that's necessary and is proving to work. That was Tim Sweeney again when asked about the criticism of the Epic Games Store. I tend to agree with him on that sentiment. 
Steam started off as a launcher specifically for games produced by Valve, and you can argue it's grown into a monopoly for the PC gaming industry. With Epic Games giving almost 90% of the revenue back to developers, we can only hope for better games and more importantly, the chance for smaller studios to explore different types of games, not just the ones that make the most money. Along with the increased cut for developers, Epic releases a free game to the public every two weeks, the latest of which is The Witness, which is actually a really fun, high quality game. When I first heard about this, it seemed crazy because I was actually contemplating buying The Witness on Steam, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to shell out 40 bucks to get it. By choosing to make a game free every two weeks, they allow the consumer to build up a library without spending any money, and they support smaller developers in the process. Epic claims they won't be pursuing these exclusivity deals forever, that this was just a way to create a disruption in the market big enough to change the tides. Now this isn't a defense or an attack of the Epic Game Store as a whole, but I'm excited to see what the landscape looks like in a year's time. Steam will undoubtedly be forced to make a move sooner or later as more and more games get scooped up by Epic. And I can't help but think that Tim Sweeney is onto something when he says that it's the games that come first, that a great game will succeed wherever it's sold. It proves that developers have the real power in the industry, and where the developers go, customers will go with them. Yeah. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, it would really help me out. Also, I stream on Twitch every Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Come hang out. I'll see you guys next time.